Hello, it is June 16th, 2022, but today I'm going to be attempting to solve a crossword from June 13th, 2022. I just happened to be scrolling through Twitter and I noticed that a crossword setter I follow, Ali Gascoigne, who um, uh, I've solved a couple of his puzzles before, and he, he constructs cryptic crosswords and perhaps others as well, I'm not sure. Uh, but I have solved a few of his times quick cryptic puzzles in the past, and I really like his puzzles. And so I saw that he was the setter of one of the Times quick cryptic puzzles this week. He goes by, I think, Jalna for the Times. It's a convention in British crosswords to uh, for setters to go by um, pseudonyms rather than their their full names. It's a very longstanding tradition. And so Ali goes by uh, Jalna, I believe. And I thought, why not solve the, uh, the puzzle that he referred to in this tweet? And in fact, the tweet uh, consists of a cryptic clue, French country house requiring gas and local water. And I think I know what the answer to this is, but presumably we'll get there in the puzzle. And I am no expert when it comes to solving uh, cryptic crosswords, but I, uh, the few times I've done them on the channel, people do tend to ask for more. So I figured why not try one and we'll see how it goes. And like I said, I'm no expert, but I will try to explain um, my thought process uh, because they cryptic crosswords do require much more explanation and um, puzzling through than uh, a sort of traditional general knowledge crossword does. So let's see what uh, Ali, aka I think Jalna, has in store for us today with the Times Quick Cryptic number 2155. So let's, let's take a look at this and see what we have in store for us. So uh, if you are not at all familiar with cryptic crosswords, each clue contains both a definition, essentially a straight definition of the answer that will be entered into the grid, and also some wordplay that is used to actually construct that answer through um, individual little individual letters that are being combined to construct those words. So um, the best way to explain that is to simply show some examples. It's worth saying there are exceptions to that format, but especially in the quick cryptic, which is not intended to be a brutally difficult cryptic crossword, we will almost certainly be following that format. And the definition is almost always found at the very end or the very beginning of a clue, and it's up to the solver to determine where. So here the clue reads, toy soldier cannot aim when broken. And unlike in a general knowledge crossword, we are given um, the length of not only the total, the, the, the answer in total, but also if it's broken up into multiple words, we're given the length of each word. And that's something we don't get in a general knowledge crossword. So we have a two word phrase consisting of a six letter and three letter word. Now, my first thought when I look at this is that I suspect toy soldier will be the definition or possibly just toy. The reason I think that is because I think broken is going to serve as an anagram indicator. So I think what that's telling us is we're going to anagram the words well, it could be we're going to anagram, it could be aim when broken. So it could be aim will be anagrammed and then we'll need to find a synonym of cannot, or it could be cannot aim would be anagrammed because that actually has nine letter, cannot aim. If we anagrammed, if we broke those letters up, that would be nine letters. And that would actually be the correct length to enter into this, into this grid, ent grid entry here. Um, and my first thought when I see that is that um, a few of those possibilities allow for man to be constructed from those letters. So I suspect this will be something something man, a toy soldier, or just a toy, perhaps. Um, but I'm not exactly sure what what the rest of it would be just yet. So let's let's look at this tempting four letter answer here. Excuse me. Celebrity in the morning visiting Tyneside. Okay, this is, um, I think I see what's going on here. I think the definition is celebrity. Um, now, in both of these cases, my suspicion is that the definition is at the beginning of the clue. Um, doesn't need to be, it could be at the end, but in this case, I think it's at the beginning. Um, and that's in part because celebrity seems like a more likely definition than Tyneside. Um, Tyneside is a, is a region to the north in the, in the northwest of England, which um, to be fair, I suppose if you don't reside in the UK, which which I do, that might be a tougher 
that, that would be a tougher bit of wordplay. But what I think, I think we are in fact using Tyneside to mean NE for Northeast, the Northeast of England in this case. And we're saying, so if we assume celebrity is the definition, we're saying the wordplay is in the morning or the morning visiting Tyneside. Morning, another way to say that would be AM in the morning in the AM anti-meridian. And if we say it sort of visits Tyneside, let's say it sort of goes into the Northeast. We put AM inside Northeast and we get name, a celebrity. You could refer to a celebrity as a name. That's a big name, a big celebrity. Um, now this, I don't suspect I'll be able to get right away this long. I'll probably want some more crosses to get this long answer, but let's take a look at it just in case. New competition providing a home for extremely unfamiliar film. Now, there are a few things here that look like cryptic bits of wordplay. Um, I'm guessing the definition is new competition, perhaps, just because unfamiliar film seems like a slightly strange definition. But anyway, um, extremely will often mean we will take the extremes of a word. So it could be for extremely, and we would use the F and the R. Um, probably more likely we'd be using the U and R from unfamiliar, the extremes of that word. A is often just the letter A, um, but it could also just be nothing. Um, it could just be part of a home, for instance. Um, also, providing a home for could mean... Um, extremely or extremely unfamiliar or extremely unfamiliar film goes inside of competition, for instance. In other words, competition provides a home for those things. But anyway, I'm going to, I'm, I'm actually just going to skip over that for now and let's see if we can get some, uh, some easier, shorter words first to provide us some crosses in the grid. So football, perhaps gold and black. Okay. Once again, I think the definition is probably the beginning of the clue. It's probably football and perhaps gold um, gold can be abbreviated a couple of different ways. Chemically, gold could be abbreviated AU, so we could think maybe it starts with AU. Gold, oops, gold can also be abbreviated OR. Um, that's kind of more of a, um, I don't know, heraldic or, or decorative, um, application of gold. Um, and in many languages, that's similar to how one would actually say the word gold, not in English, but in, in many other European languages. And black can often simply be abbreviated B, B for black. Um, there are many, many words in the, <laughs> the world of solving cryptic crosswords that uh, have these one letter abbreviations. The best reference for this is the Chambers Dictionary. That's the standard reference for cryptic crossword solving. So if you were to look up B in Chambers Dictionary, you would find all the different things for which B serves as a valid abbreviation, and one of them is black. Anyway, gold and black, O, R, and B make a football, perhaps, an orb. And so that's what's going on with that, perhaps. Football and orb are not synonymous per se, but a football, perhaps, it's an example of an orb, a sphere. Boy, we're seven minutes in. I've only solved three clues. Um, I suppose that's what happens when you explain them with this level of detail. I hope that's okay. Let's see, candid atmosphere displayed outside. I'm wondering if displayed outside means open air. Yes, it does. Okay, and this is a, this is a fairly straightforward solve here. So displayed outside, here's an example of the definition falling at the end of a clue rather than the beginning. Um, and this is actually very straightforward. Candid, if you're candid, you're open with somebody, and an atmosphere could be described as an air. There was a, there was a mysterious air, a mysterious atmosphere in the, uh, the room, for instance, I don't know. What about this? Stockpiles containing 50 empty cartridges. Now, again, uh, often what you'll do in a cryptic crossword is you'll solve backwards from the definition. Uh, in this case, perhaps golden black, I sort of solved from the wordplay. I saw the O-R and the B, and then that came to mean orb. And then I said, oh yes, yeah, so I see an orb is a football perhaps. Um, similarly with name, I sort of put morning inside of Tyneside Northeast and then came to name. In this case, my suspicion is that empty, empty cartridges in a firearm perhaps are blanks. And I don't yet know how that fits the wordplay, but let's see if we can figure out, figure out why. So stockpiles, yes. Okay. Stockpiles containing 
50. So a stockpile, you could say I stockpiled food, I banked food, I had a, a bank of food, a stockpile of food, a food bank, I suppose, could be considered a stockpile. And 50, well, one way to represent 50 in written language is L, the Roman numeral for 50. So if we consider our stockpiles, our banks, to contain 50 L, we've created blanks or empty cartridges, and that satisfies the clue. Now, what about this? It's used by artists in moderate amounts initially. Okay, um, now, initially immediately draws my attention and makes me think the definition will be not the part that contains initially. Uh, so my, my suspicion is the, uh, the definition will be it's used by artists. Um, I don't, I actually don't have a guess as to what that is just yet. But when I see initially, I think probably we'll be taking the initial letters of one or more words. So maybe moderate amounts, M-A, and then, although, you know, if that's all, if everything I just said is true, I don't actually think there's enough wordplay to create a useful answer, because then we would just have M-A, and that would be the whole wordplay, because it's used in artists would be the definition. It's used by artists. So maybe not. Um, I apologize if you, you've already seen what this is, but let's. I'm going to jump around a little bit. I just realized this answer already has all of the crosses it's going to have, so we may as well go ahead and attempt to solve it. Time to request some work. Time to request some work. Um, ah, I see. So time... Here's another example of a one-letter abbreviation. Time can simply be abbreviated T. T is a common abbre abbreviation for time. And so um, I'm going to start with that. And if you request something, you ask for it. So I think request might simply be ask. And so now we have time to request, T, ask, and we're left with some work. A task is an example of some work. So there we go. We've solved it. And um, I'm going to skip this for now and just I'll come back to it. But let's let's look at this. Artist's color I left inside in a pot, possibly. Okay, now this, uh, once again, I suspect the definition is the beginning of this clue. Artist's color. Um, possibly, I think, could be a an anagram indicator. Now over here, perhaps was was used simply to mean an example of a, a sort of a football as an example of this thing or a football maybe is an orb. Um, over here, we're using a very similar word possibly to be an anagram indicator, meaning a sort of another possible arrangement of these letters could create a different, uh, well, not necessarily different words, but a different combination of letters essentially is what we're saying. Uh, and why do I think that's the case? It's just because it looks like it would be. Um, also, actually, here's something to, to note. Artist's color I left inside in a pot. Now, why would we need inside and in? That's sort of suspicious. Um, generally speaking, a crossword, a cryptic crossword setter will try and be efficient. They won't just put excess words and letters in the clue for no reason, unless it's necessary to make the clue read smoothly. Um, but in this case, it isn't. It actually makes the clue read less smoothly. So that's that's why I think this in, either the in or inside, is being used for some other purpose. And I think what that means is in a pot will probably, probably all of that will be anagrammed as a result of the possibly. In other words, we need a new configuration of the letters I-N-A-P-O-T. And that will be containing something else. There will be something else inside the letters from in a pot. Now, I could simply be the, the letter I. Left, here's one more. Actually, did we already have a left? No, we didn't. No. Um, in any case, L and R are common abbreviations for left and right. So if we 
if we assume, as I am doing now, that I left will be the letters I, L, and then we put them inside an anagram, another configuration of the letters from in a pot, I think that will be the answer. And I think in this case, it will be oil paint, which is an artist's color. An artist's color might be an oil paint. And we can see here, indeed, I, L, I left are inside the letters from in a pot, rearranged, O, P, A, I, N, T. Okay. Now, what, what next? What's, what's going on here? Everything considered as part of final lesson. Right. Okay, this is useful because this is a new, an entirely new category of cryptic clue um, that we've not yet seen in this particular puzzle. Now, I think what's going on here is the definition is everything considered. And our indicator here, I, I keep using the phrase indicator, by the way, and I haven't really explained it. An indicator is a word that clues you in to a particular operation that we're going to apply to some other words in the clue. And I think in this case, as part of, that's an indicator telling us to look for a hidden word or hidden words in this case, a hidden phrase. Now, if we look inside, if we look, if we take a part of the words final lesson, we actually see that there is a phrase inside final lesson that maps to the definition everything considered. And that is the words in all. Inside of final lesson, we have the words in all, and that can be defined by everything considered. Well, everything considered in all, um, we're moving along with this crossword. Now, let's see. March, I'm just going to try, I'm sort of just continuing on with possible crosses that we have. March right up in front of a politician. Okay, so my, my, my eye is first drawn to politician because in cryptic crosswords, which are generally British crosswords, politician can often be represented by the letters MP for member of parliament. Now, if I do assume that that's part of the wordplay and it's at the end of the word because it's at the end of the clue here, I might just put in MP to see if that looks like anything. And it sort of does. It looks like it works. AMP is a very plausible end of a word. So let's see. We had A, politician. So that's simply A, M, P, A, just the letter A is there. Um, and then, right. Okay. So, well, right. Speaking of the word right, we have the word right. And I think that's comprising the remaining letters. Now I said R and L can be valid abbreviations for right and left, but in addition to being able to abbreviate right with the letter R, you can also abbreviate right with the letters RT. Now, what happens if we sort of put those letters up? We arrange them in a reverse vertical direction. Instead of R, and this is a, since this is a down clue, that makes sense. We would reverse them if we we're putting them up, so to speak. So we're putting, instead of RT, what about TR? And then we've put right up in front of a politician. We've put TR, which is right up in front of AMP, and we've made tramp, which can mean to march along. I, I tramped down the street. I mean, I don't know that I would say that necessarily, but but <laughs> you see what I mean? It to, to march on the ground, to tramp on the ground. And there we have it. Um, now let's look back at this toy soldier cannot aim when broken. Um... So it sort of looks like cannot aim has indeed been anagrammed. Is that what this is? Cannot aim when broken. I'm going to switch to the pencil tool and just pencil in some letters to see if I can make, oops, make any sense of this. So what letters remain to use? We need an I, an additional N, a C. So let's see. I, N, See, oh, I see. Okay, yes, I do see what it is. It is, I'll switch back to the pen. It is action, action man, which is a, um, a you know, a, to a, a little toy soldier. So uh, exactly as, as defined by the clue. So action man is an anagram of cannot aim. So in other words, cannot aim when broken, when we've broken the words cannot aim, we rearrange them into the phrase action man, which is defined by toy soldier. So there we go. Now let's look at one down. Come down to earth after a match. Now my, immediately when I see come down to earth, I think of the word alight, to alight, to come down to earth. 
you know, the plane alights, for instance. And can we define, can we, can we get there through the wordplay? Yes, we can. It's actually very straightforward. So a match is simply a light. Do you have a match? Do you have a light? Um, so that's, that's actually a very straightforward bit of wordplay. We, we're, we're simply substituting light for match and using the letter A uh, unchanged. So what about this? Pathogen changing shape. Okay. Now, maybe this would be less obvious if we didn't already have these crosses, but it's, it's fairly clear to me that with this P, A, and H already in the clue, uh, what we're looking to do here is anagram the word pathogen, and our anagram indicator is changing. So we're saying pathogen changing. We're going to change the arrangement of the letters in the word pathogen, and that will be defined by the only remaining word, which is shape. So heptagon, maybe? Hept yeah, that looks right. Heptagon. I'm just going to P A T H O. Yes, I just wanted to double check that the letters are indeed correct, um, and they are. So, um, what about what was this again? Oh, right, new competition providing a home for extremely unfamiliar film. Oh, is it motion picture? Sorry. So. I was wrong, actually, about my suspicion. If that's correct, I was wrong about my suspicion as to the definition. So it's a good thing I left and came back to this. Now, I think the definition may simply be film, a film, a motion picture. Now, I'm going to put this in in pencil just to, to, conf just to remind myself that this is only a guess. But we need to justify motion picture based on the entire rest of the clue serving as the wordplay, which is new competition providing a home for extremely unfamiliar. Uh, now, well, okay, extremely unfamiliar would, would suggest taking the extreme letters, the extremities of the word unfamiliar, which is a U and an R. And in fact, we can see U and R here. Now, as I said before, um, that providing a home for probably means we're going to be situating those letters inside something else. So now what, what would that be? New competition. Oh, ah, yes. Okay, so I think what's going on here is we're anagramming the letters from competition, and then those, in other words, we're making the word competition new. We're, we're doing sort of a new arrangement of the letters in the word competition. And that, whatever we create from that rearrangement, will provide a home for extremely unfamiliar, the UR. Uh, and I'm just going to count. So there are 13 letters total. If we remove extremely unfamiliar, we're left with 11. And is that how many letters are in competition? Yes, it is. Com yes, yeah, so th th that must be correct. And it looks like it is C-O-M-P. I'm just going to assume that's right. So I'll switch back to the pen. I will type those in, and there we have it. Okay, now what, what should we tackle next? This looks maybe fruitful. Polish front of sideboard with rag. Now, oh no, sorry, Polish front, Polish front of sideboard with rag. I saw Polish with a capital P and it made me think of Polish. But actually, it's, it's that, that's, I don't know if this will be relevant to this particular clue, but, but it's worth pointing out. It's an extremely common practice of cryptic crossword setters to sort of mislead you with that kind of thing, where you'll see a word that in the, what's called the surface reading of the clue, in other words, if you were just to read the clue as an ordinary English sentence or sentence fragment, um, the wordplay will actually use the word in a completely different sense. So in this case, you could imagine, because the surface reading is using this word to mean polish, to polish something with a rag, to, to, to make it shine, um, whereas perhaps in the wordplay, it's being used to mean Polish, it's used to mean, say, an Eastern European nationality, and that's relevant to how you, and you have to, and what the constructor is intentionally doing is putting you on the wrong track and making you think of the word from a different standpoint. Anyway, I don't know if that's relevant to this. I haven't actually thought about this clue yet, but um, front, so could it mean Polish or Polish? Front of sideboard with rag. I don't know. Sorry, I'm not, uh, sandpaper polish something? Sandpaper it? Um, Front of sideboard could be an S, width could be and, and a rag could be a paper, a newspaper. It is indeed sandpaper. Look at that. Okay, great. So um, let's go through that quickly again, just in case you didn't catch what I was saying. 
So in this case, polish is actually being used essentially in the same sense it's being used in the surface reading. So to, to polish something, you could say to sort of sandpaper it, to sand it, to polish it, if, if it's wood, for instance. Um, now, for the wordplay, to construct these actual letters, we take the front of sideboard, which very straightforwardly means the beginning of the word sideboard. The front of that word is simply the letter S. The word with just means and, straightforwardly enough, it's a synonym. And a rag, a rag is often a way you could refer to a newspaper. You could say, oh, that rag, that paper. And so we have S and paper, and that makes sandpaper or polish. Okay, what's next? Uh, rescue fierce creature, grabbing end of tail. I'm guessing rescue is going to be the definition because it could be tail, I suppose. Now, when I see grabbing end of tail, end of tail is probably the letter L, simply the end of the word tail. And grabbing, I suspect, means um, enclosing. So if we take maybe a fierce creature and then put an L inside of it, we get something that means rescue. Um, I don't immediately see what that is. I'm not good at this kind of this kind of clue often where you have to get an entire word and then just put another letter into it. That, that may also not be how it's how this works, but that's my guess. Let's let's look at this short clue here. Shout about everything. Ah, so my first thought when I saw about was that maybe it means re, for instance. You see that as a, as a you might see that as a heading on a memo, for instance, or, or actually these days in a reply to an email, re regarding. Um, but there are a number of ways you can abbreviate about. Another would be the letter A, A for about. Um, but another way, which I think is the one... Um, here is C for circa. In other words, if you think of um, circa 1900, or a, it's about the year was about 1900. Um, and then if you think of everything, well, what's another very straightforward way to say everything? It would be all. And there we create the word call, which could be to shout, to call. So shout about everything. C all makes shout call. All right. Plants account supported by a covert U.S. group. Now, the very first thing, supported by, sorry. Now, the very first thing I think when I see this is that supported in a down clue means, well, can mean anyway, but I think probably means um, if, if some letters are supported by other letters, it means in a down clue, they're above them. If you could imagine um, account supported by a covert U.S. group, um, you could imagine whatever is a covert U.S. group or a covert or, or whatever it is going to be is supporting. In other words, is underneath the other letters that will that will be above them, that will be supported by them. So uh, that's what I suspect is going on there. Now, covert U.S. group could be CIA. Uh, does that help anything? Uh, that that when I put that in there, building from the C, covert U.S. group, and we see that the definition might be plant. Um, because I've already used, so if I'm assuming that co a covert U.S. group is the CIA, then that means the covert U.S. group or group couldn't be the definition because we've already used it for wordplay. That would make plant the definition. And this sort of looks like acacia, doesn't it? Which is a plant. Oops. Oh, although I've spelled that incorrectly. So let's see. Yes. Okay. Actually, I really lucked out there because it turns out CIA is at the end of the word, which makes much more sense based on what I just said about being supported. So if we, let, let's look at this again. I, I sort of misparsed that a little bit, but let's let's look at it. It, it accords with my original explanation, but not what, that, what I then typed in. So if we see a covert U.S. group, now again, setters rarely will include superfluous words and letters. Um, usually they will serve as a linking word or an indicator or part of the wordplay itself. They rarely will be there for no reason whatsoever. So a covert CIA group will be a CIA. If we didn't need this a, the clue could have simply read plants account supported by covert U.S. group. That wouldn't have changed the surface reading of the clue. That wouldn't have changed the wordplay. The a is there because it actually needs to be there because we're entering it into the puzzle. So, and it, it, it accords with what I was saying earlier about being supported because ACIA is at the bottom of the clue, so it's supporting whatever is above it. 
and a count could simply be AC. You could imagine AC being used um, to abbreviate account, a bank account or something like that. And so account is being supported by a covert U.S. group, which is CIA. So there we go. Acacia is a plant. Oh, and here's the, here was the clue that, that turned me on to this puzzle in the first place. French country house requiring gas and local water. Now, when I saw that tweet, my first thought was French country house is chateau. But why on earth is it chateau? And I think that's safe to enter because in English, very few words end with you. Most words in English that end with you are loan words from French, or I suppose I suppose Latin, but more, more commonly French. Um, so why would that be true? Well, this is actually quite a clever clue, I think, because uh, it's made up of two things in this case. Chat, or chat, I guess, chateau. Um, but in English, chat and then O. Now, O would be an example of local water. Now, why is O local water? Well, it's because we're talking about a French country house. So local to that place would be France. And in French, the French language, water would be O. That would, that's how you say and, and spell water in French. So that's the local water. And then chat is a gas. And this is the meaning of gas, meaning um, sort of um, jabber or, or just sort of um, relatively uh, superficial conversation, gas, chat. And when we combine those two things, we get chateau, a French country house. So there we have it. Now let's look at this. We have several crosses here. So does that help me rescue fierce creature? Ah, okay. So this may be the end of tail that we're grabbing. This L here could be the end of tail. And rescue... Um, why can't I see what this is? Oh, that's so frustrating. Let's see if this helps. Had lunch in canteen occasionally. Okay, I see what this is, and this is nice because it's yet another category of wordplay that we've not yet seen in this puzzle. So I suspect the definition is had lunch in, and that's because when I see the word occasionally, I think perhaps that's an indicator of a um, another type of cryptic operation we've, we've not yet seen in this puzzle, as I said, and that is um, an alternating letter operation. So if we think we're going to take occasional letters from the word canteen, let's alternate letters we're taking from canteen. In other words, we're going to skip the C, use the A, skip the N, use the T, skip the first E, and use the second E. And when we do that, when we, when we take occasional letters, we alternate them according to this pattern, we're left with the letters A, T, E, or 8. In other words, had lunch. And um, so we had lunch in canteen occasionally. In other words, in the occasional letters of canteen. Okay, now, what is going on here with the fierce creature grabbing end of tail? Um... I keep thinking solace, which would sort of be not rescue, but kind of safety. Ah, no, it's not that. Um, it is salvage. So if we Look at the word salvage, which means rescue. If you rescue something from the waves, you salvage it from the waves. Um, that, that makes perfect sense with the definition rescue. And if we imagine that word without the L, we have the word savage, which could be a fierce creature. So if we take a fierce creature, a savage, grabbing the end of tail, in other words, incorporating the L, we're left with the word salvage to rescue. Okay, great. So let's keep going. Spring meadow with the first sign of poppies. Um, now, when I see meadow, I think of I think the word lee, which is a way to which is a way to refer to a meadow, and then this is, and then okay, for the the first sign of poppies. Now, that's a fairly verbose way to do this, but you could say the first sign of poppies is the first letter, the first sign of the word poppies, which is a p, and that makes. Uh, that makes leap, which could be to spring, to sort of spring forward, to leap forward. Um, and here's a good example of how the word in the surface read of the clue 
is spring, meaning the season of the year, spring. Uh, whereas the word in the definition is spring, meaning to jump, to leap. So you have to always, in fact, I would go so far as to say in cryptic crosswords, it, it's almost safer to assume the word will be used in a different sense than it, than, it, than it is the other way around. Okay, where to look next? What about this? Act it up finally with respect to what a bar worker did. Now, my suspicion, just at first glance, without parsing this very carefully yet, is that acted is probably the definition. Now, why do I say that? It's because the word starts with a P, and we can here see the words up finally. Now, up finally would suggest um, just the letter P. Now, the thing is, you could just as easily imagine acted up finally being, well, it wouldn't make sense necessarily, but just let's just imagine in theory um, they could be the letters DP because finally could just as easily apply to act it up as it could to just up. But the word doesn't start with D. It starts with P. So that probably means the first bit of wordplay is up finally. That would mean acted is not part of the wordplay. It would be the definition. So acted would be P. And actually my first, now that I say that, I haven't really parsed the rest of this, but acted looks like pretended. So can we, yes, yes, I see how that works. So acted up finally is P with respect to could be re and that's actually similar to what i said about about over here um re can be referenced with the word about it could be but it could also be referenced with with respect to so regarding that topic re that topic with respect to that topic and then what a bartender sorry what a bar worker did is tended tended bar so there we have what a bar worker did is tended and we have p r e tended makes pretended or acted there we have it. If this were a down clue, I may have interpreted the up as meaning reverse something because we're going to put it up. I, I don't know, but that, that isn't, uh, wasn't as relevant here in this across clue. Okay. I was the manager after days and did very little. So immediately when I see did very little and this in a five letter word ending with the D, I think maybe idled. So that would be a plausible way to say did very little idled. And actually that does... I think that's starting to bear up under examination because the very first thing in this clue is I. So if we assume did very little is the definition, that would make I the first bit of wordplay. And in fact, I is the first letter in idled. So then let's see, does that, I was the manager after days. I was the manager after days. I actually don't see how that works. <laughs> Sorry. I was, I, well, I was could be I'd. As in, um, I was doing, no, was it? Hmm. And did very little. I was the manager. Sorry, actually, maybe I'm, maybe I'm on the wrong track with this. I was the manager after days. Manager ED editor. And did very little. Oh, I don't know. This might, I can't tell if that's the answer. I apologize. I'm going to come back to that. Sorry if you're way ahead of me on that. Um, cross somewhat tetchy bridegroom. Cross somewhat tetchy bridegroom. Um, Somewhat tetchy bridegroom. I'm not saying that immediately either. What about this? Small metropolitan area accepting vehicle shortage. Small metropolitan area accepting vehicle shortage. Um, small could be S. Metropolitan area could be city. Ah, yes. Okay. I see what this is. So this isn't the way that this word reads, but it, it, it clued us into what's going on. So, um, let's, let's look at the whole clue. Small metropolitan area, accepting vehicle shortage, accepting, uh, in keeping with several other answers in this puzzle, perhaps that means, um, some of this wordplay accepts or takes in, incorporates other bits of it. Now, what's a vehicle? It's a car. So let's say, or it can be, that's one, one vehicle, obviously. 
What if we say the small metropolitan area accepts or takes in a car? In other words, the S city, oops, incorporates car. Oops, so we have S car inside, sorry, we have car inside S city, if you see what I mean. Um, sorry, it took me about five times attempting to say that before it came out correctly. We have the car, the vehicle is accepted by small metropolitan area or S city, and that makes scarcity, which is a shortage of something. Okay, now what about this? Piece of software put up for review. Um, now again, actually, as I, as I said, when we looked at uh, the pretended clue, when I see up in a down clue, it makes me think we're going to reverse something. And review with these letters looks like appraise to me. If you review something, you appraise it. So, oh, no, okay, never mind. We aren't reversing anything. Are we? Piece of software put up for review. Now, put up could mean raise. So in fact, that isn't a reversal. Yes, okay. A piece of software is an app, an application, and put up simply means raise. We um, then we put the numbers up, we raised the numbers, and, and that's that. App raise makes a praise, which is review. Okay, whoops, what do, oh, oh, did we never looked back at this, I'm sorry. We have all the crosses we're going to get, so we should look back, ah, I see what this is. It's used by artists in moderate amounts initially. So it's used by artists, uh, tempera, which is, actually it's very similar to this, artists' colors and oil paint. Well, artists also use uh, tempera paint, oops. So now let's solve that. Um, it's used by artists in moderate, ah, uh, ah. Uh, okay, now here's a perfect example of how you, you need to interpret <clears throat> words in a different sense in the surface read of the clue and the wordplay. So in the surface reading, um, mo uh, moderate is being used as an as an adjective to mean, um, you know, considered use of a sort of non-extreme usage of something. But in the wordplay, we're actually using it to mean a verb, to moderate something, to temper something. Temper your anger, moderate your anger. So to moderate is to temper. And then amounts initially is just an A. So I, I had originally thought perhaps we'll be saying moderate amounts initially, M-A. In fact, we're only using the initial from the word amounts, which is an A, so we have temper A, and that makes tempera, which is a, a type of um, paint that artists can use. All right, so let's get back to where we were. Uh, we haven't looked at this. More evil packing material unopened. More evil, iller perhaps? Packing material unopened. And then what was this again? Oh, right, I was the manager after days and did very little. Well, is it idled? Why is it idled? Uh, sorry, I don't know what I'm missing about that. Um, because The reason I say maybe it is is because it, uh, it would work with, um, it would work with Iller. But I still, I just can't figure out why it is that. Anyway, more so anyway, I thought more evil perhaps was iller and evil in this sense, or rather ill in this sense, meaning say an ill wind, an evil wind, a sort of bad omen, that, that meaning of that meaning of ill. It that that bade ill for for my solve of this crossword, the fact that I can't seem to solve um, why this is idled. Uh, so anyway, let's see if we can solve this. More evil packing material unopened. Oh, I see. Packing. Okay, this is so. This is the kind of clue that is actually extremely. It's it's sort of, if anything, the most one of the most straightforward types to solve. But I find it one of the most. It's 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 one of the most straightforward to solve once you know what the answer is. But I find it difficult to solve up front. And it's the same with salvage, where you need an entire word and then only a single letter changes. So here, packing material would be filler. You could you could use filler to pack to the the, the empty space in a box. And then we are going to un, it's the word filler unopened. In other words, we're removing its opener, its first letter F. Um, so when we unopen the word filler, we're left with the word iller, and that is more evil. Now that leaves one clue remaining, assuming idled, idled is correct, which I very much suspect it is. 
Cross, somewhat tetchy bridegroom. Cross, somewhat tetchy bridegroom. Hybrid? Yes, cross. Hybrid would mean cross. Okay, so why is that correct? I'm not going to enter it fully because that will um, submit the puzzle, and I want to I want to just look at this first. So cross means hybrid. So somewhat tetchy bridegroom. Um, Oh, it's another it's another hidden word. So somewhat is telling us to just take part of tetchy bridegroom. Boy, that's clever. So uh, it's it's clever and also very simple once you see it. Hybrid is simply spelled out inside the words tetchy bridegroom, and that's uh, that's the solution. So does this? Yes, it is complete. I'm not going to submit this because <laughs> my time is absolutely atrocious because I <laughs> I was talking through the whole thing. But uh, but hopefully that was helpful to you. Now, why is this idled? I was the manager after days and did very little. So it's very clear that did very little is idled. That That is straightforward enough. I was the manager after days. Very sorry about this. Why can't I see what this is? Now, days could be D, D, D for days, I. Ah, sorry, I see it. I'm sorry, that took me so long. I is, is simply I. It's not I. It's just I. And then I was the manager. Was is so sorry. I is I. Well, let's park that. Move on. Was the manager is led. In other words, that person was the manager. That person led the team or the company or whatever. And was the manager is coming after D for days. D is a way to abbreviate days. You could imagine, you know. 4Y8M3D, and that suggests four years, eight months, two days, or something like that. I don't I think I already mixed up the numbers, but you take the point. And D could be an abbreviation for days. And so we're putting was the manager led after an abbreviation for days. All of that is after I, which was the first thing in the wordplay, and we're left with idled. Um, and there we have it. That is how to solve Times Quick Cryptic 2155 by Jalma, a, a setter I enjoy. And I, it was a very, very long solve of this puzzle um, uh, because I was trying to be extremely thorough. Do let me know if you'd like to see more of these with less explanation. Um, I, I probably can't spend this long on uh, solving a puzzle like this very frequently because it's it's just incredibly time consuming. But if you'd like to see me work through this sort of puzzle maybe a bit more quickly, let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. Anyway, uh, that's that for... Um, this sort of extra, extra video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, please do have an excellent remainder of your day. Take care. Mm -hmm.